a deal and I had no idea what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Like literally no clue. So I go on Bigger Pockets, which is a great platform. Um, and I just simply ask a question. I said, hey, here's what I got. I'm looking to partner up with somebody. And here comes Matt. No picture. Full government social security name on his profile. And he's like, yeah, no problem. I can help you out. We could team up. And I was like, you know what? This guy seems sketch. He's probably going to steal my money and run away. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm good. So I talked to him like once or twice. And then I just ghosted him. And then I'm at the office one day, and this guy is talking about Matt, Matt this, Matt that. And I'm like, wait, what's, what's Matt's last name? And he says, Brodzik. And I said, wait, this guy is real. <laughs> so I meet up with him, and we look at this. Uh, I, was actually, I was actually just there. Somebody's flipping the home right behind it um, on Madison Avenue. The home was built in the early, no, 1800s, right? Late 1800s, brick foundation. That was fun. It wasn't even brick. It, it was, was like a bunch of boulders put together. <laughs> it was what construction was like back in the day. Yeah. You didn't say anything. He just walks up and he's like, okay, looks like a good deal. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that was, that was easy. What do you think that's taking seven years to instill or throughout the seven years that you instill that you were like, this was probably the biggest game changer for the company? When... I just decided not to do everything myself. But the thing is, I, I like, that's me. Like, I like to do it myself. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't, not that I don't want to hire people to do it for me. It's I want to know that I can't get played, if that makes sense. Like, like the construction. No, no, definitely not. Absolutely not. Um, uh, like, construction. The easiest way out and... Like, think about our spreadsheets, right? Our spreadsheets are very detailed, like, to the fucking penny. Like, there's absolutely not a penny missing when we, once we do our auditing, right? And everything's categorized. The only reason it's like that because is I, like, I took the time to understand the construction aspect, right? The same thing applies to um, whatever, our KPIs, right? Our, our tracking, right? The only reason it got to that granular point is because I took the time to understand it and say, okay, how can we individualize this thing so that way when things need to be compared apples to apples, they're very easily uh, retract. Like you can pick, pick and pull what you want, what data you want, right? So most people, if they apply the mentality of, okay, I want to scale and grow, they hire faster, which listen, if I did that, I, we probably would have been way bigger and, and like more dominant maybe. Um, I just don't under, I don't like the foundational aspect of it. Right? And again, I'm, I'm kind of t tying like four or five different thoughts into one. But the main point is I like to learn it and then teach it and then let that person get better at it versus just hiring somebody that knows it from the gate and I could just, again, trust on doing it right. Um, but then my, like I'm relying on this person's mechanisms to uh, influence the way we do our numbers, which is at the end of the day, the most important piece is the fucking numbers, right? Because you need to understand every dollar in, every dollar out, right? So when you hire a flipper, they get general contracting quotes and the general contracting quotes, I'll do this job for $75,000. Okay, split that up because that's, that's you, can, you can have a guy that gives you five different price, like five different split ups or sections. You can have a guy that gives you a hundred different sections, right? How granular you are tells me how detailed or how much you understand the process, if that makes sense. It, do, it does, but I mean, so, so I, to answer your original question, what, what I would do better or different is probably just let go faster, but I don't agree with the foundational aspect of how strong at its core a company could be by doing that. You need to know a little bit about, about everything and then hire people that personality-wise fit that role and let them be better than you. And compliment. Because yeah. trust issues is where you don't trust somebody to do their job because you feel like you know everything. Right. I think that's what trust is usually. So, do you, are. Do you, so would you agree? I think we agree. I think we're aligned in terms of I'd rather find somebody who's super green and teach them the way we do it versus bringing somebody in with. Oh, yeah. Potentially like, I, bad I, I habits agree with that. or I agree with that. You or, can't teach an old, I know, old, dog, yeah, new old dog new tricks. Yeah. I mean, it's it's because, again, it can change the way the entire business is done. Of course. Right. They yeah. start, start but it could be again, thing. everything is yin and yang. Right. So it could be a good thing and a bad thing. Right. 
eventually you just have to accept the fact that, I mean, yeah, you can as a, we we can not, you can we can as a company um, agree to never hire people with X amount more than experience because then they're too um, pre-made, right? I don't know if that makes sense. But I mean, at a certain point, you have to accept the fact that you're going to just hire people with experience, right? And then that their quote unquote, as long as their personality does, it's about personality. It's again, the three things I always say, there's knowledge, skill, and talent. If you hire for talent and you teach knowledge and skill, then you're fine. The problem is people hire for knowledge and skill and don't give a fuck about talent. And then that's where it all falls apart because then this person's imposing their methods into the company. Whereas the company should be the one that kind of guides their talent and applies their knowledge and skill in the right way for the company. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the willingness the willingness to want to change when you come in super experienced and you're so accustomed to doing things certain ways. I think. Yeah, I mean, that's, it that's has where to be the, there. Yeah, that's that's where the the um, the talent comes in. People like that's that in my eyes again. I may be using the wrong word, but talent is personality right you have to have that personality to do that um yeah the stuff that you can't teach i think overarchingly what i do very well is separate like i have no emotion like i don't give a fuck how the fuck you take it like this is yeah. how it is and either you agree with it or you don't I, I i don't care if you agree with it or you don't because at the end of the day it's it's like i'm giving you an unbiased opinion here like it's is, not, are, you, are, are you talking about that just in business or in, in general oh in general <laughs> i'm a i'm as black and white as black and white gets i feel like I always say to you guys, I feel that 51% of the time we make six out of 10 decisions, right? So on average, we do a good job making decisions, right? At the end of the day, I always say this as well. I'm the leader of the ship, right? So I let everyone make their decisions. But if there's a decision where everyone's like, okay, well, I don't care. You have to make a decision. I'll make the decision, right? But I don't want to, what's that word? Um, um, sidestep? Uh, no. Uh, undermine. I don't want to undermine anybody else's decision um, because everyone everyone runs the department. I just make sure that the pieces fit together. I'm like, I'm a, a, a glorified babysitter, right? I make sure that everybody works together very well and make sure the pieces are moving co collectively well. But in terms of stepping away, I don't I don't think I ever step away. Let's say hypothetically 30 years from now. The I don't mean like fully step away, like walk no, away no, so and that's just what let I'm the saying. business so I'm answering run its own. But, you know, when do you, at what point... Listen, I think that this is a question that I think my wife asked me, you know, I was like, she's like, you know, when are you going to like chill out? Not here, like just even even in previous yeah, roles. In general, in general. I said, you know, when I make a certain amount of money yeah, and then she's like, what is happen. that certain amount of money? What happened? And then I said, I don't know. Yeah, that's the point. You, right. There, there, it's, it's, it's not money. It's you get, you to, get to a certain money. point. Right. I, I'll, I'll never forget. I think when I first made the big transition, you know, I had to sit down with the with with John and he's like, how much money do you want to make this year? And I was like brand new. I mean, the previous year I had sold nothing. Literally, my first two years were horrid in real estate. This is the complete opposite of what's pitched out there. But like, come real estate, you'll make six figures. You got, yes, you can make six figures. Absolutely. I don't disagree with that. Um, if you have proper training, if you're super motivated, if you're a person that's uh, very self-confident, um, that you're not afraid of rejection and you can overcome all these things, there's a chance that you will make six figures your first year. Mm -hmm. But... It's a very small percentage of people that actually do that. But anyways, so I had to sit, sit down with him. He's like, how much money do you want to make this year? I said, $100,000. And he was like, you know, like I was excited about it. I had made way more money in my previous role where I was at, but I was trying to be realistic. And he's like, that's it? And I'm like, hey, John, let's baby step this, right? Then it was 100. True. Then it was 200. Then it was 300. Then it was 400. And then now when I look back, I think I'm like, I still don't know the answer to that question. How much? Like, how much is when you stop? So I don't think I'll ever leave, but I think that building a team and just stepping away a little bit more and just managing from the outside, looking in and putting the pieces together allows me the time to be there for the kids, be there with my wife. Like, But before that, stepping away, I don't think I'd ever do. Like, eventually, I probably will not be CEO, right? I'll Somebody's going to do better job than me and that's fine like i don't need to be running the ship but i'll definitely be on the board of directors right that's fine but, but you're still they, stepping away like i i disagree with what you said like you can only be good at one thing i think you can only be one good at one thing at a time meaning that yeah exactly. if 50 percent of your time is focused on work and you can shut it off which we all know 
Matt doesn't shut it off because it'll be 1.30 in the morning and we're getting reminder emails. That's fine. But if you shut it off and then the other 50% of the time is family or hobbies or whatever, then you can be good at both things. Yeah, but I see, like, I don't think that to get to where we want to go or where I'm picturing to go, somebody has to sacrifice. Because there's no way you're able to get to the size that we want to be going. And, like... I don't, I don't think that you have to sacrifice. I just think that you need to find the person who is willing to take that road with you and is willing to understand that they're going to sacrifice. Yeah, but I don't... Which I, is hard. See, but, but that's the thing is, I don't agree with that either because you should not have to sacrifice. You should just be able to do. Like, I think that over time, I will change. Like, I change very regularly. Not internally, but in terms of, like, what I do. Listen, I mean, I don't know. Like, for me, it's like... I think you do a good job. I don't think that I necessarily wish for you to <laughs> die rich and alone. I, listen, I don't think uh, rich no, people. I don't, I don't think rich people ever die alone. I want to. I'd rather work. Like I honestly rather work. Right now, yes. Personally speaking, I'm making huge sacrifices, but it's for the better of everybody else. Like yes, us getting to a point will yield shit personally for me right meaning like personality wise i'm, I'm gonna um, call bullshit on that no it's fine I, I i honestly think i don't think that anybody in the company if you ask them that they feel that you should be sacrificing as you call it oh no i will know as you should let me finish my so time. so hold on so i think you do it for you personally because all of us collectively would probably say hey no you should you know, you should find some time to... Right now, I, I, I personally choose to do what I do. Again, if it's not for, yeah, maybe my benefit as well, but I don't think of it as my benefit. It's for everybody else's benefit. I get that. It's just, you know... You're not going to stay young. Oh, I know that. All right? Like I said, I'm... You're going to wake up and your back's going to hurt. I know that. You're going to sneeze and your back's going to blow out and you're going to be on the floor. I hope not. Oh, You're not getting right any word. younger. Vegetable, vegetable. You don't, you don't get younger. You don't get the years back, man. That's all I'm saying. I'm a little bit older. Look, see? <sighs> what happened? You just cramped up? Yeah, but I was Did so we sparring. put you to sleep? I was sparring before this. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, the normal course of action. All right, are we doing reaction videos? We're watching this? Yeah. All right, video one. Let's take a look. Hold on. Hello, Mr. George. How much you pay for the for the new guy? Twenty bucks? No, too much money. He's no good, <laughs> no good operator. Sorry. What's, what's funny is, not, I mean, it's <laughs> it's funny. It's not like laugh out loud funny, but it's yes, it is. It's just silly because it's like how the fuck? Like, I, I, see, how are people that stupid that they fucking think that's, a, that's so? First that off, works. so first off, you have to understand they're thinking outside the box here. <coughs> no, that, that's for sure. Okay, so when you don't have you don't have a forklift that goes high enough, you, you get two you get two forklifts. It makes sense. I mean, I think the 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 um the actual um the B roll is funnier. I think the B roll is funnier. Yeah, the second link's not working. Oh yeah, wait, it is. Oh, oh, it's this guy, the guy who talks, the motivational speaker, Daniel G. You guys know when somebody gets on the call and they're like, I just need to see the price. What do you do? Well, yeah, so the price of the program is 3000 bucks. Done. You watch what other people do, you ready? I, you know, I can't give that to you right away because, you know, I need to know a little bit more about you. And now you're in an argument mode. So you're like, Daniel, what the fuck do I do? Highest form of control inside of sales, ready? Make the prospect feel like they're in control. So you tell me, Daniel, I just need to know the price. Finally, holy shit. About time. I get on calls every single day and I have to explain to them for an hour and a half as to why our program is the right fit for them. Yeah, I watched this video before. You want, you want my take? Mm. So I think, it's, I think it's good to be open and candid with people. I think it's good to call out the elephant in the room because they're all going to say the same thing. But I give them the price because it's a little bit different, right? It depends on the industry that you're in. Like people want our product. So if you want our product, it's this dollar. Mm. It's not really negotiable, right? And it's not like I'm calling them saying, hey, do you want us to rebuild your home for you? No, we're it not depends on it. what you're doing. Are you selling or are you um, are you selling or are you buying? That's what matters to me. Like, I agree with your point when you're selling the product to them. Right? Yes. Y yeah. But when you're buying, I, I like to anchor. His, his video goes on to explain that he, he does that. He does like that, that pivot move, right? And he, and he calls out the elephant in the room and then he 
talks about the quick benefits of the product before he comes reeling it back in. So he pretty much alludes to the product and then he comes back and says, hey, how could this product help improve your business? Right? And then he kind of gets them yeah, back re again, you're selling. Again, you... You're always selling. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying in actuality, whether we are selling ourselves to buy the product is different than if you were just selling our product. Yeah, like that... I would just give the price and then do what you're saying if we are selling the product to them. Yeah, I, like, listen, I'm not, I we don't do this whole thing like, okay, what, what are you willing to pay for it? No, we, no, don't, do we don't do that. We just say, hey, listen, the price is this, boom, give us I the focus, price. You know. Listen, I focus on which everybody should. You explain how the business operates, what the steps are, and mm -hmm. you explain it with, with semi-granular detail, right? Because you want to give them a little bit more than what other people are giving them, right? You want to sprinkle in that little extra for them. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, that's typically when the price of converse, uh, the, the conversation about pricing comes up. It's never the first thing they ask for. Right. They may say in the beginning, hey, you know, I wanted to figure out, you know, what your pricing is like, what the process is like, blah, blah, blah. And then I always go process first. Boom, 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 boom. And I give them this long, drawn out explanation, which yeah, is the is, truth that's what you to want. add value so they can see. And guess what? Most of the times I get calls back and they're like, hey, my clients really love you. You know, they're super excited about everything you said. The price didn't matter. I can't even click on three. Oh, wait, now I can. That's fine. I never ran track, but I've always heard that like if you ever want to be faster, you got to run with a bunch of people who are way faster than you. And there's something that happens with us as humans. When you are surrounded by those who are like superior in their performance than you are, you're bound to be lifted up if you're as ambitious. If not, I don't even have to watch it anymore. Yeah, it's the same thing. So, I mean, what he's saying is you, you're only as good people. as your surroundings. Yeah, of course. Right? If you're around a bunch of bums... You're, you're probably going to be a bum. You may not be a bum right there in that moment. No, you may be. Bum. No, I'm, I'm, listen, check this out, right? So you may be the most prestigious person in your circle, right? And if you're not aware of that, and again, it's not saying that you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have friends, right? If those, if those are your day ones or your day ones, it doesn't mean that you can't improve your circle and say, hey, like, I'm not going to spend every day after work hanging out with you guys. Yeah, but it's not about you improving your circle. It's about the circle wanting to improve up to you. Yeah, but that doesn't always happen. Hey, that's and fine. then people stay in that circle and then they end up like bums. Uh, well, bums is the wrong word, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? Like, but if you, I just had a conversation with somebody on the phone literally yesterday. They're like, you know, I want to improve my circle. And I think that if I make this move, it's going to improve me overall. And I said, I couldn't agree with you more. If that's the reason why you're going to make this move and you see the benefit in this move and you feel like being surrounded by these other people will help elevate you, that is a sheer fact. It'll happen just automatically just by you being in the same room with them every single day. Yeah, of course. Right? You're going to listen. You're going to hear different things. You're going to be like, oh, I can implement this. I can do this. I can do that. You're not just doing it because like, you figured everything out by yourself. Like That's why there's power in networking, right? There's power in going out to the dinners that you go out to, you're elevating yourself because those dinners are with people who are elevated past where you currently are, right? Yeah, totally it gives you something to reach for, right? If you're, if you're the biggest, baddest person in the room all the time, it just means that your circle sucks. You're in the wrong you know room. I mean? Yeah, you're in the wrong room. Go next door. Yeah. All right, so our last video.